Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here with another Affinity Photo tutorial. Um, this time um, really following a couple of requests and conversations that I've had with um, a, uh, a photography student of mine, but also um, some comments online with regards to the, uh, the recovery of highlights, uh, blown out highlights, and um, any extreme exposure um, uh, elements within an image if it's obviously for, um, uh, taken and saved as a raw file and, uh, and I th I'm sure many of you already know that uh, if you are taking your photographs in raw and saving them as raw whichever type of raw file it is you've got far more scope and capability of recovering shadow areas details from the shadow areas um, details from the uh, overexposed areas and in fact recovering um, colors and enhancing uh, changing white balance uh, reducing noise or adding noise for that matter if you've got a raw file compared to a jpeg so given the choice if you've got space on the memory card and your camera is capable of taking in raw whether it's a mobile phone or a standalone dslr or mirrorless camera do it in raw particularly if the if it matters with the image that you uh, that you want to edit so i just thought i'd do a quick video just to, with regards to developing a raw uh, file within affinity photo so in this picture here very overexposed all the colors washed out of the blue sky i know it was a blue sky on that day um, and that's all gone but of course it was a raw file taken on a canon um, DSLR so it's a CR2 raw file um, camera uh, a Canon raw uh, version 2 and um, and as soon as you open up a file a raw file it automatically opens within the develop persona of the uh, affinity photo program so it's not an extra module within affinity it's built into affinity which is slightly different to other editing packages and on the top here just to remind those people who are new either new to affinity or perhaps haven't seen my earlier videos or don't know how um, affinity photo works essentially affinity photo has five personas or areas of editing you've got the um the photo persona where you do all your main editing which we'll come on to in a little while you've got liquify persona which as the name suggests where you can distort pixels we're not covering that today you have the develop persona which is what we're in now because that's highlighted that's in color the others have uh, um, f faded out uh, and the develop persona think of it as like a dark room where you're taking your negative developing it before you do any work on it um, using um, the prints um, that's the sort of analogy and then you've got the tone mapping persona which is all about exposures and about HDR images and extreme levels of exposure uh, which of course we could take this image into if we wanted to and then you've got the export persona which uh, the way I liken it it's um, it's file save and export but on steroids so lots of permutations within that i hardly ever use that so i think most users of affinity probably won't touch that under normal circumstances but those are the five personas today we're just going to look at the develop persona which is what we're in now and then the photo persona which we which the image goes into soon as you click on develop there now as soon as you open up a raw file as i said that's overexposed all the colors washed out and there are a few little um uh, blemishes or things in the image that we may want to remove that is actually an inset there so we may not need to remove that uh, but that is a blemish but on the right hand side instead of the layers uh, palette and all the other uh, familiar palettes um, uh, uh, that we use uh, you only get that when you're in the um, photo persona so in the develop persona you've got really these tabs here you've got basic lens distortion correction you've got details where you can uh, add details or reduce noise reduction uh, or indeed add noise reduction you've got tones which is about curves black and white uh, which is something we will look at and then overlays which we're not looking at today so under the basic section of developing your raw file remember what we're trying to do with this file is to reduce the overexposure and bring out the colors so the first of all you would look at the exposure so 
overexposed, bring that down a little bit. Okay. You can see the blue is starting to come out now where it washed out before. If you look at the histogram at the top, typically textbook wise, you want the histogram or the peaks of the histogram uh, to be roughly in the middle for a good standard exposure. Obviously, if it's over here, it's to the right, over here, it's to the, to the left. So it was a little bit too far to the right. So you want to bring it roughly about here. So you're starting to see some of the, the details in there and you're not losing any, you're not, you're not, it's not being overexposed in the, um, you're not losing the details in the overexposed areas. Okay. And if you want to turn on, uh, show clipped highlights, if you turn that on, then it means that if it is uh, going to be clipped, there we go those little red markers are telling us that those areas where it's overexposed, you're losing all the detail and you certainly don't want to do that. So you want to bring that down to roughly where we were before. And then the, uh, and then we just adjust the black points. So that's the dark pixels you can see at the bottom of the image. So we're just adding a little bit more to that. This is all very much a personal taste what works for you. The, we could increase the brightness a little bit if we wanted to, but we'll be doing that in the photo persona with an adjustment layer later anyway. Now the contrast we could, uh, you've got the enhance uh, element there and you, you can increase the contrast. That always adds a bit of punch to it. In, increase the clarity. Now the clarity works in the mid-tones. So if you zoom right in and you click on clarity, you can see it just enhances the um, the bright and the dark areas by exaggerating the difference between those areas. Okay, let's just make that full screen. And then you might want to saturate the colors a little bit, you know, just a little bit. And then increase the vibrance a little bit, but that just sort of helps with the detail. Okay, now you might want to change the white balance. I don't want to here. Shadows and highlights, you might want to see. Do you want to change, the, again, the shadow? Oh, I'm going to keep the shadows. Okay. Okay, we don't need to do anything there. We, I'm not going to correct for lens distortion. Uh, under the detail, detail refinement, noise reduction, you might want to reduce some noise, but I don't think, actually, there is much noise there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there is there anyway, so that's fine. Uh, we don't need to uh, do that. Uh, we don't want to add any noise, uh, clearly. Um, but under curves, I do want to enhance the the image by increasing the bright areas, decrease increasing the dark areas, just to add a bit of punch to the image. Okay, so just an, a standard S curve. You'll see that a lot in photo editing. Add an S curve, uh, how shallow or how uh, in depth that S curve is, how exaggerated that S curve is, really depends on how much of um, a, a contrast image that you want. And that's all we want to do here. Then, if we click develop, you'll see that once it's developed, it goes into the photo persona. Now we're in the photo persona. We're no longer in the develop persona. We've got our regular set of tools on the left and we've got the layers panel here. Okay, so now that's much better than it was before. Now these are insects here, so we might want to remove those, but we'll see. The first thing I'd want to do, in fact, let, let, let's remove those first. OK, because they're a little bit blurred, so they're distracting, really. So the, the, the tool that I tend to use is the in-painting tool. Uh, and those of you who've seen these videos from me before or are familiar with Affinity Photo, this is the one that works particularly well. Um, so we're using in-painting. Always select current layer and below so that when it does paint, there is no layers below, but it's a good habit to get into. Um, and we just basically paint over it in a random fashion and then it will sample pixels uh, and of course it will um, uh, get rid of them then so let's just there's another one down here 
there that one now this one might be a bit trickier to do successfully but let's see oh no that's done it really well okay um now that's those blemishes are removed another little trick that i do do to add a bit more punch punch to an image is duplicate it and you'll see this in other videos i'll put a link to a couple of those um where i've done it before it's duplicate it and just change the blend mode to either overlay that might be a bit strong soft light or hard light the hard light it makes the colors very strong soft light is a good compromise and overlays is quite strong so the overlay and hard light are very similar so i tend to go for soft light and if we just do a before and after by disabling that top layer you can see that it's enhanced those colors already without it looking too false i might want to reduce the the strength of that down a little bit but actually i'm fine with that strength that I'm, I'm i'm happy with that and i want to combine the two so just highlight the top one and merge down so it's basically combine that effect into one layer now and the last thing i want to do is add a couple of uh, adjustment layers so just go to the adjustment layer in the layers palette and uh, first of all let's go to curves so i might want to just enhance this the same as what we did before in the develop persona you just want to add a slight s curve just to add a little bit more punch and contrast to it not too much because you we really try to reduce the the um uh, overexposed areas and we don't want to repeat that again okay and then uh, one more adjustment layer this time it is the hue saturation and luminosity um, uh, adjustment layer and what i want to do is basically select the blue color in the background and really enhance that so click on the color picker color picker okay so yeah click it and then move it across this is a slight discrepancy in affinity which i'm not too uh, um, enamored with is that in some tools like this particular one you click on the picker button nothing seems to happen but when you move your mouse over, it's now a little crosshair. So you're sampling from that area. In other areas where it's the color picker, you're actually clicking and dragging the color picker across and then it samples, a bit like a magnifying glass. So you're never sure which one it is, but in this case, it's, it's click, move across and sample that color of blue. So what we've basically got is that the color pickers are identified that our sky is in that range of blue. Now, if I wanted to desaturate the sky, I just move that slider. It doesn't affect the um, the, gr the green or the yellow uh, because, of course, that's not the color we picked. But actually, what I want to do is enhance it a little bit. Not too far because that becomes almost like a, 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 a blue painted backdrop. So we just want to edge it forward a little bit. And, of course, if you wanted to do the yellows, we could do the same thing with the yellows by going to the yellow part of the spectrum you can see that's moved to the yellow part of the spectrum and again if i desaturated it it would desaturate just the yellows but again i might want to just boost it a little bit there we go so we've added two adjustment layers within the photo persona one is a curves adjustment and one is a color adjustment okay and so simply that is much better than the image that we had at the beginning and so developing a raw file is easy in Affinity Photo. And if you do find that you've got clipped highlights or overexposed areas or underexposed areas, you can bring a lot of that detail out. I mean, if I wanted to bring the detail out here in these dark areas, um, conversely, I could do that as well. So thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful and do give it a go and do let me know any feedback. 
And if you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do so. It helps me to um, uh, sort of put the effort into create more videos uh, if I know that people are uh, not just enjoying them, but finding them useful and leaving some um, uh, constructive feedback, which indeed I am, I am getting, uh, but also uh, that they want more videos. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. <music>